the differential diagnoses for pelvic congestion syndrome are endometriosis, which we can understand shares quite a few of the same symptoms. However, endometriosis is not an issue of the venous system. It's an issue of having endometrial tissue outside of the uterus. And so you'll still, you'll see some of the timing be similar to the pain and the endometrial tissue can get into the bladder and the rectum and lots of different areas. And so you can have um, similar pain patterns to that. Um, but again, endometriosis is not related to the venous system. Adenomyos adenomyosis, adenomyosis is also Differential diagnoses for um, pelvic congestion syndrome include endometriosis. Endometriosis is not a venous problem like pelvic congestion syndrome is. Endometriosis is when the endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus, grows outside of the uterus. And so then you're having an endometrial response uh, like a period um, outside of the uterus. And it can be anywhere. It can be the bladder. It can be the intestines. It can be the rectum. And so you can have similar pain patterns um, to pelvic congestion syndrome. Um, as far as timing is concerned, um, worse with the menses, for instance. Um, but again, they have a different reason for occurring. Adenomyosis is when the endometrial tissue becomes implanted into the muscle of the uterus, and this causes heavy bleeding and pain with the period. And so again, this is a pain syndrome that's related to the pelvis, but not related to the venous system. Similarly, fibroids are non um, cancerous tumors in the uterus, and they can lead to heavy bleeding and pain, and um, again, are not related to the venous system, but they can cause pelvic pain. Musculoskeletal disorders also, um, of course, can involve the pelvis, the sacroiliac joints, and the low back. Um, if these um, issues, if you have musculoskeletal pain that is not related to a new injury, um, if you have musculoskeletal pain in the pelvis or the low back that does not respond to typical treatment, with chiropractic, acupuncture, and massage, then this is not true musculoskeletal pain of musculoskeletal origin and probably has a visceral or vascular component to it. Irritable bowel syndrome can also cause pain in the pelvis and is the number one reason um, that um, for an incorrect um, hysterectomy procedure, uh, hysterectomies are given primarily 
for pelvic congestion syndrome. And so if you have symptoms of pelvic congestion syndrome that do not respond with removal of the uterus, then one of the things you could have is irritable bowel syndrome, sadly. Um, so irritable bowel syndrome is, of course, not a venous uh, issue. It is a digestion and inflammatory issue um, that needs to be treated um, with diet and other kinds of nutritional intervention that we can do in natural medicine. Painful bladder syndrome is related um, sometimes to interstitial cystitis. Um, painful bladder syndrome means pain in the bladder. Um, usually in, it's, in that diagnosis, there's no change to um, the actual cells in the bladder. Um, but with interstitial cystitis, there are inflammatory changes to the cells of the bladder. Psychological factors for pelvic congestion syndrome or pain, not for pelvic congestion syndrome, but for pelvic um, pain. Um, psychological factors, so um, this includes a lot of times a history of assault, um, rape, um, shaming, um, different um, hurtful, um, emotional, and physical um, assaults. Um, pelvic inflammatory disease is usually caused by a sexually transmitted disease um, that then causes inflammation and adhesions in the pelvis, if not caught early. Um, if it's caught early, um, then that would be treated with the appropriate intervention for that STI. Um, if it is not caught for a long time and not treated for a long time, then the inflammation of the sexually transmitted infection um, will cause adhesions in the pelvic organs, the pelvis. And so then you will have to deal with not only um, treating the infection, but also healing the adhesions.